Just get the deal and you'll find the money. Uh, how do I raise you know, large sums of money that I don't have in order to do a business acquisition? I was just on the phone with a good friend of mine who uh, he, was, he actually was just rated uh, one of the top three most innovative CEOs in the country. And I'm talking to him and along the conversation, I'm like, well, you know, and then I made this offer for, you know, almost $200 million on this business. And then he said, whoa, 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 what? Walker, I didn't even know that, that that was an option. Like break that down. So in this video, we're gonna break down how you, you pull money together to do an almost $200 million acquisition. My name's Walker Dival. I am the best-selling author of Buy Then Build and the creator of Acquisition Lab. Uh, the elite accelerator for acquisition entrepreneurs. So I made an offer. It was about 180 million. But first, I went and, and you know, spoiler alert: I didn't actually get the deal. Like we weren't able to close. I'll tell you why at the end of this video. But first, a quick story. So last night we were in the um, uh, search forum of Acquisition Lab, where we work with our members to break down their sort of deals. And um, I want to give this example because it's a little bit more down to earth. This is a first time buyer. Okay, he had an offer on, um, a, a, he was under a letter of intent to buy a company for seven and a half million dollars, I think. And it was um, a 4.5 multiple of earnings, okay? Very fair offer, um, strong offer, in fact. Uh, but um, here's the thing, like when you are dealing in the private markets between like five and 25 million, say, you're sort of larger than what most financial buyers um, can do and or understand how to do and you're sort of below what most private equity companies do right and so there's a there's a thinner market and you're able to get better terms on deals and it, this was in this was the instance in this case so he was only injecting about five percent um, and then check this out he had the seller uh, rolling five percent equity into the new entity and then there was two seller notes on the deal one had a full 10 year standby and the other had a full two year standby. Okay, so it's a very, and then, and then the rest was filled out with like an SBA loan for like four and a half million bucks or something like that. So, you know, super interesting capital stack where, um, you know, because the market was kind of thin, he was able to pay the seller the price, but sort of get these super, super creative terms and kind of defer a lot of the financing, right? So <clears throat> um, here you go, there's seven steps that we're gonna talk about in order to successfully make an offer on a deal of almost $200 million, okay? Step one, get yourself on the list of people that are actually allowed to do this, okay? So um, imagine for a moment that someone, you know, you know, went to an Ivy League grad school, got an MBA, went to Wall Street and, you know, did private equity for 20 years and now they were breaking out on their own and wanted to buy this, you know, $70 million deal. And it was like their first one on their own. Probably watchers of this video are not that profile, but all of us can understand how that background lends itself to this as a next step. Okay. Um, I, 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 I'll never say never, but like, I really don't recommend buying restaurants. It's not something I want to do, but like, you know, let's just say that someone was a general manager in a restaurant for 20 years and then wanted to go out and buy a restaurant. Um, you know, it, you know, it makes sense, right? So in this particular case, um, you know, I wrote Buy Then Build. Like, like I've got, you know, readers all over the country, the world. I've got, um, you know, a Facebook group and an email list and all this other stuff. And the business, I can't tell you what it is, but it operates sort of in that space and it's kind of a dinosaur, right? I actually made... I was I was almost made an offer on this business in 2010, 2012. Um, I wish I had bought it, but anyway, um, it was a lot less then. Uh, but anyway, so the, the point is, is is this is something where, you know, uh, because I had done a bunch of deals and because I was in the space and I had used this before and all the rest of it, it was one of these things where I was on the list of people. People understood the story and it made sense, okay? So, you know, you got to get yourself on the list of people that are allowed to do that deal. All right. Number two. Uh, number two is make a fair offer. OK, um, don't do any of this. Uh, hey, I'm going to go super cheap and negotiate really hard and try to, you know, what I want you to do is effectively like lubricate the deal, like get it to closing. OK, I happen to know 
that uh, um, in, in Q4 of 2021 was the peak um, of the market in this particular segment. And multiples on adjusted EBIT at that time were um, about 7.25 times, okay? So, you know, I was able to take that data. I know that the market has cooled off just a little bit and there's like less deals getting done. Um, and so I was able to make an offer at that price. Okay, probably slightly proud to what it is today. Um, but, you know, um, it, it was a real offer that I was able to put on the table. Um, so here's the deal. You start to get into the realm of, like the, like the example before, you tell me the purchase price and I will tell you the terms, right? And to, in order to get it done, okay? Everyone knows, you know, that, that no one's gonna come to the table with 180 million and write them a check, right? So, you know, I, ma the, I made the offer for 7.25 times, which is a very good offer. I had talked with the uh, president CEO and I, and I had an approximate understanding of what uh, earnings were. And so this takes us to step three, which is institutional lenders, okay? You know, institutional lenders are going to be, um, you know, banks, lenders, uh, funds that basically make loans to private equity and independent sponsors. Okay. And this was someone I had worked with before. I've known him for four or five years. Um, and I called him up and I said, Hey, and he's like, Walker, you know, it's not like, Hey, here's who I am. Here's what I'm trying to do. It's someone I had a relationship with, right? Network. Uh, so I call him, I'm like, look, um, I'm interested in buying this company. This is what they do. He goes, yeah, I've sort of heard of it. And you know, he knows me, he knows my background. He knows I've done all kinds of deals. He knows I wrote the book, I did all this stuff. And I said, look, I want 50, private equity firms use 40 to 60% debt on acquisitions. So what I want is 50% debt on this $180 million acquisition. And I want sort of like a pre-qualification letter, right? Like I want like a love letter from the bank that says like, look, we, we have the money. We're interested in this, you know, sponsor, and you know we like the deal, and so we want to give. Um, if this were to happen, you know, we want to give ninety million dollars um, uh, for this transaction. Uh, we I went back and forth. Okay, so that's step three. Okay, so step one, get on the list. Step four is um, make a fair offer. Step three is institutional lenders. Okay, we're going back and forth with the lender. He's meeting with his team, you know, his committee, whatever, you know, and comes back and says, look. Um, I, we, we think we can do this um, with, you know, there's gonna be a little piece of mezzanine and like, you know, we'll be the senior lender and like we can do it, but um, we have to have this, this one thing. What is it? He said, skin in the game. That's number, number four, sorry, number four is skin in the game. So we need you, Walker, to at a mid, bare minimum, we need you to put in a million dollars of your own money. You can't get it from anywhere else. Like, you know, you just, you got to put in a million. And I said, okay, um, is a million enough? And he said, it, it is, it, I mean, it's enough. I said, okay, so I, I put in 1 million, you put in 90 million. He said, well, we'll put in the next 89 million and to get you to the 90, right? And I said, okay, okay, cool. So, you know, rule number four is, you know, be prepared to put skin in the game in order to get the deal done, okay? So, you know, again, you can tell, I was sort of approaching it with, do I even need to put anything in that? So I'm gonna put a million dollars in on a deal that's 180 million, cool. Uh, so then, um, then step four is getting sort of seller participation, okay? So I, so I get this love letter from the bank, <clears throat> you know, we have all these estimates on, you know, here, here's, you know, we understand that your earnings are this, but if, if there are a little, if there's a variation, like please just apply this multiple, you know, here's the lender that likes me in the deal. Here's the offer, okay? And in the offer, we're sort of expressing, hey, seller, here's what I need you to do. They're not really a seller. They're not on market. It's not even for sale. I'm just like approaching them. So I need uh, really um, two things from you. One, um, I need you to roll 10% equity into this deal, okay? So you're going to get a lot of money at closing. And um, uh, what I want you to do is keep 10% of the enterprise value, this 180 million, so 18 million in equity in the new deal, okay? They're probably gonna end up negotiating a spot on the board and some other things to make sure that they know what's going on, fine. Um, the point is, is I'm trying to sell them on the fact that, you know, they're gonna say, well, what's your plan, right? You know, so I'm gonna say, here's the plan and here's what we wanna do and it's, you know, three to five years and, 
you know, the amount of money that you're going to make on your 10% is, you know, hopefully equal to what you're getting at closing today on this deal. So we're going to get you two turns, bites of the apple, they like to say. So I'm going to sell them on that seller equity role. Okay. Uh, step two is I need um, some deferred compensation. Okay. Um, to the tune of about 20%. Okay. So here's what I did. I said, um, we're going to take this 20% um, uh, so at 36 million and we're going to divide it in two, 18 and 18. The first 18 is a seller note, guaranteed payments. Okay. Over five years, uh, just every month, um, at, you know, some interest rate. Okay. Hopefully 5%. Um, but so I need you to do this seller note piece. Okay. So some deferred comp 18 million. Number two, I need a, a just a, a taste of an earn out because I'm gonna go get private equity, we'll get to that in a minute, to come in and they need to see that you guys are on the hook for some kind of future performance, okay? So we're gonna do um, 18 million or 10% of the whole deal as an earn out. We're gonna split it into two pieces, 9 million and 9 million paid out 12 months after closing and, and um, 24 months after closing at the end, okay? Um, based on some sort of hurdle rate for the company uh, once we get in there, okay? So um, step five is seller participation, okay? So get on the list of people, um, make a fair market offer, uh, get the institutional lender um, skin in the game and seller participation, okay? If you can get that, okay, in this particular story, all right, um, that was 80% of the deal. 50% was the senior debt, well, in the, you know, the loan um, for the acquisition. And then the next 30% was a mix of seller equity role, earn out and seller notes. So that's 80% of the deal done. Okay, done. The next step, which is step six, is a binding letter of intent. Okay, so if they agree to these terms, okay, and they say, you know what, Walker, I like you. I like this deal. Um, I think it would satisfy our shareholders or whatever, and uh, we can do it. And I say, okay, great, sign here. I just need this exclusivity for, in this case, 90 days. Um, I said, okay. So, um, I, spoiler alert, I didn't actually get this deal, so they didn't agree to it. But uh, the next thing I needed was a binding LOI. Now, if I get 90 days of exclusivity, remember at the very beginning of this, you know, get the deal and the money will show up. Well, I'm going in with 80% of the deal fully financed when I put it on the table, then they give me a binding LOI, okay? Once that's binding, no one else can have this deal except me, okay? And I become the sponsor of this situation. So the very last step, step seven, is a private equity, equity injection. So now when I go to the private equity firms, and I say, listen, I need, you know, $36 million um, in order to close this deal. I already have 80% of the deal fully structured and all I need is their little 36 million. Like they might say like, that's not enough. I need to put in 50 for it to make sense. Okay, we can start moving things around. Like it's not, it's not hard, don't you see? So the thing is, is once you've got the whole thing done and you approach the capital stack in the right order, um, that's how these things kind of just come together, okay? And, and, and that's the, the seven steps of putting together a, a $200 million offer. Walker, you didn't get the deal. Why didn't you get this deal? Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, like, what's up? Well, here's the story. It turned out that, and I, I, I knew this, but I didn't, I didn't do the proper homework, okay? There's one little Achilles heel, and that's the following. The private equity firm that owns this company had gone public, Okay. And when they went public, what happened was, um, they took their liquidity event, right? Like they, they're, they're still operating the company. They're getting, you know, lower cost of capital and all the benefits of coming with being a publicly traded company. But here's the thing, uh, price to earnings ratios of, of, you know, um, publicly traded firms on average are about 18% or sorry, 18 times over, over time. Right. And here I am offering 7.25 times. At the, at the moment I made the offer, their price to earnings ratio was in the 20s, okay? If they had, you can kind of do the math here. If they had taken my offer, they would have destroyed hundreds of millions 
in shareholder value. <laughs> I, I laugh because it's ridiculous. But the point is, is like I was in the I was in the conversation. I was there having the conversation. And um, so anyway, that's that's why I didn't get this particular deal is because they already were, were publicly traded at a much higher valuation than than you know what I was offering. So they are a cash cow to this private equity firm and they are just never going to be able to sell um, unless they sell the whole business to another kind of uh, private equity firm, I guess. Listen, if you are looking to buy a business in the next you know one month to 24 months, uh, please consider the Acquisition Lab. We are the elite provider, the elite accelerator um, of this. We anchored in world-class education, um, then you know, built a very vetted community. Only about 25 or 30 percent of our applicants are actually extended an offer to enroll. So we, we, with all due respect, we sort of you know get you know get rid, don't let the riffraff in. Um, we also have about 14 advisors. We've got you know a diamond approach to advisory, where you know we have a, a, um, a coaching call almost every single day um, to allow our members to get uh, different points of view on their deal, all completely relevant to, to 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 what they're doing. And then of course, like you know the resources, the tools, the you know su supplier network, and all, and all the rest of it. Um, so thanks so much, and we'll see you on the inside.